touch up on it a lot more and um, by then they will hopefully have a better idea of to what extent it's at and how they can go about helping the child. And the third one that I wanted to talk about was organization. Organization, um, again, really easy. It's the child can't plan effectively. Um, and this can, it's actually pretty simple to um, notice. For example, if you have a child and well let's say you have a class and the class is asked to have a certain notebook for each subject and or say a certain different colored pen for a different thing and a child with an intellectual or learning disability will have a problem um, being effective with these things such as you know um, bringing each notebook or just being organized bringing a pen bringing a pencil just having you know a hard time doing and handing in homework um, so that's one way you can definitely catch up one way to help um, a child with this is to actually have them just bring have one notebook sort of like those five subject notebooks where um and one pen that way they have one notebook and one writing utensil and they you know don't have to be so overwhelmed with keeping up with all these different notebooks and papers and folders and they to hoard, sort of just have one notebook separated into like homework classwork and you know like just lesson planning that's one way you can help a child with an organization issue the last topic that I wanted to talk about was number seven and number seven is describe teaching methods and materials that can be used to help students with intellectual disabilities achieve their learning potential I think this is really important um, if you're a teacher to know how to benefit all your children and not just the majority. So, I mean, the first thing you can obviously do is modifications. You know, modifications, you just address the means of the student, their way of learning, so you might have Sally, for example, who has no problem with sitting down, learning the lesson, knowing what the lesson is about, going on with the lesson, and proceeding on to another topic. Or you might have Sandy, who, you know, has a hard time with understanding the lesson she needs constant um, reassurance she likes to ask a lot of questions um, she often gets lost um, in long talks so one way to help that particular student is you modify the lesson plan for her and being an effective teacher you would have to know how to go about that um, modifications can be as simple as just redoing a skill sheet, um, you know, retyping directions for a certain student to make it more clear for them, or it can be something as big as, um, reconstructing a whole curriculum plan. Um, what, like, if you notice a child just isn't getting it, you might have to go, you know, sit down with officials, board officials, and school officials and just come up with a whole curriculum to benefit that child so they can too be successful in their school life. Modifications can be done with lesson planning. Um, you can do this by just identifying directions, by just um, highlighting skills, just pointing them out to the students. You can do this by having 
constant um, reviewing and review sheets and by examples. Um, if you're doing a certain assignment, it's best to use examples um, to show students um, different ways of how to do it. You know, there's not just one way to do an assignment. So examples definitely help. You can do modifications for lectures and assignments. Again, for assignments, you can do um, in detail outlines of the lecture. You know, you can hand out like a little booklet or a pamphlet of just an outline of what you will be reviewing each chapter and key topics that the student should focus on. You can do this by reviewing um, an assignment, just reading it over with the class or with the student individually. You can also um, modify lectures by stopping to ask, stopping to allow students to ask questions. This is really important because some students can't sit there and just listen to a whole long lecture and be um, focused and on task and grasp it as fast. Sometimes you just need to stop and say, okay, like, is everyone getting it? Yes, no, no, okay, what is your question? Yes, okay, good, keep going. So that's a whole other thing. You can modify worksheets and tests. This is um, pretty simple. Um, you would just simply and clearly state the directions, you know, nothing too crazy or too um, just complicated for a student to to read. Um, sometimes directions can be pretty long. And meanwhile, you just have to do like the smallest task. So just flat out saying what the task is. That's one way you can modify a worksheet or an assignment. Um, you can make directions or specific tasks. You can make them bold. You can uh, make the letters capital, italicize them, highlight them, make them blue, pink, purple, green, whatever you need to. Um, you can do another type of modification by taking out unnecessary pictures from a worksheet. Um, if there's a bunch of graphs, student could very easily just become overwhelmed with, you know, what these pictures are showing that they neglect to read the, you know, basic issues in, uh, stated in the article or worksheet. You can modify tests by breaking up the test into smaller pieces and sections and not just handing out one long test and expecting the students to sit there and complete it within a given period of time. Um, you can also modify tests by avoiding matching sections like um, matching tables where you would have one row and another row when you would have to draw lines connecting the two. Um, that can be very confusing for a child, uh, especially with a child with a learning disability. That can be confusing for anybody really, but especially for a child, they may become um, anxious with all the options and with all the lines crisscrossing each other so that's one way you can also do it um that's basically it um i picked the ones that i thought were the for me the most interesting to talk about and to address there's obviously so much more that can be said about children and disabilities and constantly finding new ways to help them and to allow them to succeed and to let them know and make them and their families aware that things are being done to help the child. Uh, we're not going to forget as teachers, future teacher, <laughs> we're not going to forget about your child just because he or she learns a different way than everyone else. I think it's very important for schools to definitely make that as clear as possible to their students and their parents. So that's it. 
Um, thank you guys, and that's it. <laughs>